One thing that interests me is, uh, you know, the issue of, uh, is there a little bit of a discord or disconnect between optimal athletic performance and longevity? Um, you know, uh, my understanding is, is that if you want to promote longevity, you want to relatively inhibit mTOR activity. But whereas mTOR activity is actually favorable to athletic, you know, development of strength and, and muscle mass and so on. Uh, is that an accurate assessment of the situation? Yes, that's true. Let me let me review, just give more clarity to that. That you can be an optimal athlete and be as super strong and fit and fast for mm -hmm. tennis, for skiing, for boxing, for basketball, and not and you don't have to get to unnaturally um, large size. You don't have to eat, take steroids. You don't have to get unnaturally big. But you have to get unnaturally big to be a linebacker on a football team mm -hmm. or a big power lifter. And the amount of calories they have to eat, some take even steroids. Mm -hmm. But the amount of meat they have to eat, the amount of calories they have to consume, they even have to sometimes get extra body fat just so their body can get larger on top. So they have more weight at the line. Mm -hmm. and, and a NASH study showed that linebackers on football team have the shortest lifespan of any occupation in North America. That eating a diet to try to get to unnaturally large size. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a professional athlete in my, myself. I was on the world team in figure skating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but being lean, you know, obviously, you know, look at the top tennis players in the world. They've got low body fats. But they're not unnaturally, they don't have to get huge. They just have to be have muscles for protection. Mm -hmm. You know, the basketball players, mm -hmm. skiers, you know, um, soccer players are a perfect example. Be mm -hmm. the greatest soccer player in the world, but you're not going to be built like a linebacker on a football team. Yeah. As mm -hmm. you get to a certain largeness, that degree of largeness becomes an impediment to longevity. We, you know, I'm I'm a hundred and I'm five. About five nine and a half. I used to be five ten. So let's say I'm five nine because I'm now almost seventy years old. My body fat's still low at eleven percent. I can still do sixty push ups, you know, ten shins, mm -hmm. and I can still bench press one hundred forty pounds. I can bench press my body weight. You know, I'm still I can curl eighty pounds. You know, I'm in a dumbbell. I'm still strong, but I'm mm -hmm. not going to be. But if I, in order to for me to get to be. Instead of 150 pounds, in order for me to get to 160, 170 pounds, I got to go off my diet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to eat more animal products and eat more calories to get that large and get and build. If I want to get my strength up, instead of benching 150 pounds, I want to be bench 170 pounds or 180 pounds. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to do that at this body weight and with this diet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to eat more unhealthy to get that big. Mm -hmm. I'm still plenty strong for skiing and tennis and soccer and surfing and basketball, but I'm not going to be strong to be a, a power lifter. Mm -hmm. Or a, you know, or a football player, but you can be a quarterback like yeah. Tom Brady. He's lean. You know, mm -hmm. you can be a quarterback or a line or a or a um or a tight end or a receiver. You just can't be a linebacker. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so yes, a lot of these people working out in the gym, they want to get too large, mm -hmm. and they're instructed by their trainers diets that enable excess largeness that's going to shorten their lifespan. Because when you eat that much animal protein that accelerates muscle growth to that heightened degree, you elevate IGF-1 and insulin and mTOR, which are factors that allow cancer cells to replicate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another practice that's common in the gym is to consume uh, ex extra branch chain amino acids, which I understand promote uh, insulin resistance. Um, and pr probably of a marginal benefit as far as actually building muscle from my understanding. But, yeah, uh, I mean, they're so, so focused on building excessive muscle instead of worrying about body fat being low. I'd rather a person have less muscle and mm -hmm. lower body fat than more muscle with more body fat. Mm -hmm. And they're, so it's, you know, but we still want, it's still good to exercise your whole body and be very fit for your weight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm concerned about, because don't forget, less calories lowers our basal metabolic rate, less calories do. And we have fewer calories, we're aging slower, we're burning the furnace cooler, and we're aging slower, which makes our telomeres um don't our telomeres don't show age as fast, and our stem cells are maintained better with less calories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the question is: let's say, take you for example, you could eat somewhat less calories and probably live longer, 
rather than eat the calories that maintain your body mass at 180 pounds, you're probably going to live longer and age slower if you ate the caloric load to maintain your body mass at 170 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because as you cut down past your set point, your body starts to slow its metabolism down in order not to lose weight. Your body resists gaining and it resists losing. Mm -hmm. Your body has a set point. When you eat excess calories, it doesn't just put them on as fat. It speeds up your metabolism to try to burn some of those calories off. So, it, so you age faster when you eat excess calories. And so you gain 10 pounds. You weigh way over your caloric needs because your body turned a lot of those extra calories, not into fat. It turns it into a higher metabolism. And mm -hmm. when you cut back on calories to a degree, you don't just lose weight all the calories you cut out. Your body's going to resist losing because it wants to maintain its mess, muscle mass and it wants to maintain its set point. It doesn't lose that easily. It has very little fat. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. cut back on calories, and instead of losing so much weight, you lose less weight, but your body will slow its metabolism down. And that's the anti-aging science. I could say that the only proven methodology, proven to slow aging, reproducible in hundreds of studies with all types of species of animals, including primates, is moderate caloric restriction in the context of micronutrient excellence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that those five words, moderate caloric restriction with micronutrient excellence. And as we achieve micronutrient excellence, and we have a lot of salads and berries and onions and mushrooms and seeds, and you know we have all these good healthy foods, it naturally suppresses our apostat. So we don't desire as many calories. Mm -hmm. and we get more instinctually connected to the right amount of calories that we need to maintain us at our longevity weight, our maximized longevity weight. Whereas in the American diet form, oil and sweets and meats and fats, they're, they just are so disconnected to their instinctual longevity weight.